Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our match of FEC versus UB in the playoffs. I am Raptor, joined this time by Asim this game. How are you doing, Asim? I am here for your entertainment only. I don't know what's happening in the series. Things have been crazy. It has been a crazy series. We just saw UB take their second win, taking down Civilox. I mean, sorry, not Civilox, Camel Basil's Silas in the last game with that very nice performance on the Galio by Civilox. And we're already just smashing right through this draft. Maokai through and UB up on the board. Well, I was going to say, I actually really like these bands from UB, but uh, I don't even know. B1 Maokai is an interesting choice. I feel like if you're choosing blue side so you can first pick Maokai, something's wrong. Maybe there's something crazy coming out, though. I guess this technically could be top support and maybe even jungle flex, but realistically, I'm guessing it's top. And they're just going to answer with the Cho'Gath, which I think is probably higher prio anyways. Looked really good in game two, and I just really think the champion's pretty in, in the great spot right now in most of his roles. So happy to see you be picking it up again, not trolling draft again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we saw the Maokai first pick in the first game by Yubi, and it just, it just got kind of camped all bottom lane and got rolled. The Cho'Gath, he's 2-1 and one in this series so far, so I agree. I think it's a very solid pickup, and especially Freelancer. He did such a good job the last time he had it, just mowing through the Scion in the top lane. We'll have to see if... Actually, Hafs is now on the bot, is back on support. Actually, Hafs is on support now. Paytime is now the top laner for FEC, according to our, our roster. Yeah, I was going to say, Cho is actually one of the great things about taking him early. I think opening Cho is one of the strongest things you can do in a draft because he's actually quad flex between mid top jungle and support technically, I guess farming for Senna. But we have seen the pick up the Tristana now, which I'm guessing is bot lane, which limits the fact Cho is probably going to be either mid or top. I imagine top again for Freelancer as we've seen him play it. But there is always a possibility of like Tristana mid or something, Tristana top and still seeing Cho Senna, which I doubt to see that. I would like to see it. That would be fun. I would love to see that. As, as someone who mains Senna, I would love to see something awesome like that. But it's the Caitlyn coming out from FEC right now. So we have their AD carry. I am I actually think this Maokai is going to be support. I feel like yeah. a lot of the heroic teams play it at the support role as opposed to the top side. I just don't see the appeal of it in either role, to be honest. I feel like there's better options in both situations. And the Caitlyn is the Tristana is probably going to be a fine lane, but I'm not sure why you necessarily would want to pick into this matchup already seeing the Tristana. I feel like there's still better options up, but maybe Bash is just comfortable in the matchup. Meanwhile, Volibear is a pretty early lock here. There is still, still flexibility in this draft, as you mentioned. If it's not Maokai support, it could be top or, you know, whatever. But Volibear is almost certainly top or jungle. And I imagine from what we've seen, it's going to be jungle for Wild West Wild. So this gives them counter pick and jungle now for UB. So we'll see if they answer on three. Now let's see what their response to this will be. Will UB grab their jungler here? Will they just leave it out for the bot last half of the draft? And it's going to be the Morgana. I Everyone love would... this pick here. It's yeah. so good to see because it's, it's this is jungle support flex. So even if Volibear gets flexed to top lane, they don't get punished for picking jungle here. Yeah, that's a that's a very good flex too. Morgana is a very strong support. She does really good in the jungle. We've seen Utility Monster play that like crazy this season. So great for them. The flex abound as we enter the second phase of ban. And a Vega arc surprisingly coming out for the bans. I'm not sure what that ban is for. I don't think Camel Basil plays any Vagar, and maybe it's for support, but I think they have to be guessing Maokai support already, so maybe it's... I, I really can't even say. Perhaps they've got a, a certain pick they want to take in mid lane, and they're worried about having a Vagar come to counter that. Perhaps, but I just don't think Camel Basil will even pick it. I, I don't think he could play... Like, he doesn't play the champion at all, so... That's maybe fair. they're uh, more concerned about the Vagar support, or even about like some wild Vagar top shenanigans, but... All in all, I don't think there's that much they need to be looking to ban here, honestly. Their comp is still pretty open. There's not that much that's been locked in for sure. And I do like the denial of the Cape Morgana as well. Morgana can also deny a lot of support picks here for Yubi, so they don't need to worry about banning out the support pool. As Morgana, if they pick something like Leona, they can just be flexed to support, counterpick the support matchup. Uh, and it really limits the options that FEC have drafting for their support right here with the Caitlyn. So they're going to have to be pretty clever with what they actually end up choosing on this B4-B5 pick for FEC, or else they're going to be in big trouble getting countered in three lanes at once. Yeah, and that would be that would basically be a death sentence at this stage of the game. And this could be, this is FEC's chance, their last chance, right, basically at this point. Every game from this point is last chance for them to hold on, to continue their quest towards the championship. But... They've got to get past UB first. They're down two games. Let's see if they can make it happen in these picks. UB up first for their second to last pick. And it's going to be... 
I'm guessing they grab their mid lane, uh, their support here, and then mid lane last. And it is, it is going to be the Blitzcrank coming out for Yubi. All right, so yeah, it's a pretty aggressive bottom lane coming out for Yubi. Tristana Blitzcrank. They are blinding the support, probably thinking it's Maokai support, so they're expecting to play into Caitlyn Maokai, and I don't mind it. I think Blitz is pretty good into Caitlyn in general, and it's obviously not the greatest thing if you hook a Maokai, but in general, Tristana should have a pretty easy time in this lane. She shouldn't be under too much pressure, and potentially has kill threat on Caitlyn if Maokai missteps. Although they are picking up Swain here, which might be going support, signaling the Maokai going top. I don't think Swain mid is really on the table for FEC, so that's the most likely situation. And I don't know how I feel about that. I think it's all right, but one of the real things that Strange follows with in this lane is that Tristana can outrange his E and really play pretty easily behind the minions. So we'll see if he's actually able to get any value out of that pick, really going for that kill pressure and bot lane on both sides now. Yeah, and he's he doesn't really have any escape tools either. So if he gets caught out by a Blitzcrank, he's dead. He's just basically a goner at that point. But the Lee Sin coming out here. So looks like that's going to be a Volibear top, I think. Yeah, so I, it could be Lee Sin top as well for pay time, though, which I think is the more likely case. As we've seen him pick the Lee Sin top more than almost any other player in Heroic. In fact, he might be the only player in Heroic who's really picked it a substantial amount of times. So I think the more likely thing here is we see pay time on the Lee Sin top here, and we see the Maokai going into the uh, support role with Swain mid and Volibear jungle. But there's a lot of different ways this could be laned. And the Corky as an answer is kind of just, I think, not really sure where things are going. Just think it's a generally safe blind here into like whatever they're going to put mid. And it does well into most of these lanes, whatever they choose to put mid. I think it's good into the swing, it's gonna outrange and have a pretty easy time scaling up. If it's least in mid or something, then like you don't have to worry about it at all. He can never really get on you, he'll just go basically even in the lane, you'll get pushed in. But you can't you can't skirmish early, but it's fine. Uh, and all in all, I mean I think Yubi is really just going for that scaling, whereas FEC really need to get ahead in the early game, but they're gonna have a really hard time playing the game later because Volibear and Leeson are gonna fall off pretty hard. I agree. I think Yubi has this, but we'll have to see as we get onto the rift for what could be our last match of the day. Yubi versus FEC. FEC's backs to the wall. Got to make something happen here. And just kind of standard, just a, a wall. Two walls have formed in the river. Yeah, and I don't know if we've seen Brian Singh on Blitzcrank before, but the prospect sounds a bit scary to me. If he's as good on Blitz as he is on the rest of his support pool, then I think Bashi's going to have his work cut out for him dodging these hooks. Yeah, no, Ryan already going in for Camel. Oh, he's in the range of hook here. He has to dodge. Oh, that's going to burn a flash, though. Oh, what a great burn already from Brian. Already, this Swain's in a pretty bad position in the mid lane. Yeah, and we're going to have to see how this Swain works out for the mid lane for them because Camel Basil really doesn't play this pick. I don't. I haven't seen it almost... Actually, I haven't seen any of it in his solo queue history, and he hasn't played it at all on stage as far as I'm aware. He is starting with the Doran's Blade, too, so there's some crazy stuff going on. Maybe he's been practicing on a Smurf or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen Swain Doran's Blade. So that's actually like I, I, I'm thinking too. There must be some like big. Either this is like the biggest brain like Swain that we're about to see ever, or it's an accident. Or there's something something happened accidentally in picks. Maybe they meant to grab. I don't know. I actually, actually can't. Even Maybe think they tried to pick Silas and Silas's bands. So they just like had to pick some. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but like yeah, this, this is bizarre Swain. because again, like by all accounts, from what I remember from his match history and solo queue, he's like basically first timing this champion. So. We'll see how he actually is able to lane into Civil Lock because this lane should be pretty difficult for him. Civil Lock went for the Electric Q, really going for that lane with the Corkies. I don't know how that's going to work out for him. Corky's pretty useless pre 11, but maybe he'll go for the Sunder build and try to do something earlier in the game. He did start Call, which means he's really just looking to scale up for now, though. Yeah, we could, I, and I think that that's probably the good idea here. You want to kind of get scaling up. Swain isn't really like the scariest champion in early game lane, at least in my experience. I always Brian's feel like... taking a lot of poke from Beshi here, actually going up on oh. the... Oh. Beshi going forward, though. The hook comes in. They do manage to grab That's him. That's just a kill. He's gone. Yeah, he is absolutely down. First blood going over to Brian. What a great start with his Blitzcrank. I guess he is living up like he does the rest of his supports. Yeah, and it was really well played from Brian. He made sure he's flashed the knockup to secure the hook. Didn't go for anything too crazy. Just like trying to guess on the hook past the wave. And I mean, every time you hit a hook in a lane with the Tristana, you're just killing them. Like Tristana's all in with the rocket jump and bomb is so strong. And that's going to be Maokai going down yeah. too. He's just dead as well. Dead. Boom. Jeff God grabs himself a kill too. Absolutely fantastic from this bottom lane. Brian already starting this out really well for Yubi. They're already up one and a half K. They both have a kill. And, you know, I, I'm actually as someone who, like, maybe it's because I'm just a support man, I'm a little biased, but I always think giving, like, an early kill to a support is good. It helps them kind of either get to their boots faster for roaming, which, you know, it's a blitz crank. He's definitely going to want to roam everywhere. Or it allows them, if they have to stay in lane, to get to their support, uh, like, mythic a little bit faster, especially if it's, like, locket or something or moonstone if you're a, an enchantress support. So I, I think that works out. They, they split the kills. 
Yeah, I don't know. It's not the worst thing ever. I definitely think you'd still want both kills in Tristana because accelerating Tristana in the early game makes the game so unplayable for their bottom lane because she'll do so much damage. She can just rocket jump in off cooldown and kill you regardless of what you do with counterplay. But it is all right to get a kill on the Blitz, obviously, for, you know, he's still going to be fine with that gold. It would be nicer if he was on, like, something more like an Enchanter or Mage support, obviously, but Blitz crank really operates the same regardless of how much gold he has just because the hook is sort of the same regardless. But it is going to be a little bit nice, obviously, just to, like, have Mobility Boots or something earlier. Yeah, and he's got he got a little ruby crystal for himself so he can, you know, survive a little bit more poke from Beshi right here. He's looking for something. He is on the hunt. FEC's We've got Morgana hovering bot lane, though, so they might be looking Ooh. for something here. Yeah, that hook just goes a little wide. Brian, once that comes back up, every time that hook comes Ooh, up... Ooh, Haps is going to face check this. This gets scary. It is. He does get locked down. Brian going for is going to knock him up. Going to try to grab him, it looks like. Ooh, but no, he's not. Jeff's going to go for, but Freelance going to go down the top side. FEC answers with Wild West grabbing one on the top. But this bot lane is already out of control for FEC. Yeah, that trade of kill across the map is nice for them, but it ultimately ends up being still far in the favor of Yubi because on the bot side, they end up crashing the wave and they're going to have to walk all the way back to lane. Beshi's going to miss so much on this because he's going to get zoned off the turret. And Haps is dead. He's missing XP. But she's going to try to walk up now, but he could get caught who walks up to the turret. And meanwhile, on the top side, Chogas is going to TP back and catch the waves. So he only loses about, you know, the amount of the, gold, or the, the kill ends up netting them, which is like 300 gold, and that's on the jungler. So that's like nice for Volibear, but he's also going to get out of scale if he doesn't continue to accelerate the rest of the game. And the bot lane's so blown open that I don't think he's going to have the chance to. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be able to blow that open. And, you know, Cho'Gath, it's going to get harder and harder. Like, Eason, he's good, especially now in lane. I think he can, you know, he can get quite a, quite, he can get pretty strong because he usually builds pretty heavy AD, but I'd, I'd rather have a fed Tristana. I'm not going to lie. I think the Tristana fed is much more terrifying, and I think the lead she's already garnered, like, she's, look, she's already got her little uh, uh, quiver coming out right now. She is just pushing this through. She's not that big of a CS lead, but it doesn't really matter when you've got that many kills. Yeah, early Noon Quiver works the matchup quite a bit. And on the top side, we can actually see that Cho'Gath has a little bit of a CS lead. There's obviously a wave coming to Lee Sin right now, so he's probably going to catch another 6 or 7 CS on that. But he's still up 5 to 7 CS on the Lee Sin right now. And that's going to cancel out about like a third of that kill that Volibear was able to get onto him. So top side, they're not even losing that much altogether because they were able to tee back to the lane. Unless Paytime's able to use this teleport advantage to make something meaningful happen on the rest of the map, then it's going to basically fade into nothing. Oh, Freelance is 6-2, so he's got to be careful, because if he gets too low, he's just going to just be devoured immediately. Ooh, we got a huge collapse in the bottom lane. Volibear and Maokai both coming down. It looks like they actually want to try to catch them out this far up the lane, but I don't think the Volibear is going to have a chance to gank them. They probably have... Vi oh, oh, Jeff God. just goes forward, trying to go into Beshi. He's still trying to make it happen. He's just chasing him down, but I think he's just going to die. He is shut down for Wild West, getting a little too excited there. If it's like a vein spotting for Tristana's... Trispon. Yeah, that was a sick Malphite ult from Jeff God. Just uh, <laughs> jumping in, no vision next to the tri brush there. I, I don't really know what he was thinking. I guess he was getting a little too hyped up on some play, but yeah, a little <laughs> bit questionable. Brian's just going to kill Beshi here. Beshi should die if he hits. Okay, well, he missed the hook. Yeah, he missed the hook. That's unfortunate. I think he could have just flashed for the knockup and killed him, but I, I, I don't think he wanted to commit the flash. Maybe he didn't think it was worth it to get the kill himself. Yeah, now Freelancer getting kicked back towards the turret, but there's the ult down now from Paytime. But he is getting low. I think he could still chase him down. Looks like Paytime's going to try to chase him down. The dragon goes down, but meanwhile, Beshi and Brian's still Brian's doing... just trying to hold the wave. He's waiting for his AD carry to get back to lane. Now they can freeze on Beshi. Well, Beshi has to recall here. Although they're not going to freeze. They're just going to shut... What is going... Okay, well... Jeff God's uh, making some questionable choices in the wave management here. I guess they just want to shove this in because they know he's going to recall and they want to get a couple of plates on the turret, but I think the better play is still to freeze the wave there and try to deny him two waves so that he's just completely out of the game in terms of XP. We'll see what ends up like transpiring in the bot lane from here. I imagine they're going to get this turret pretty early with the shove they've been putting into this wave now, and they're going to at least try to get one plate on this wave, and they're going to give it solo to Jeff God because Blitzcrank is reset, so that's pretty nice for him. But now we have to see where Brian's going to go on the map because... He has a lot of options here. Jeff God's pretty safe because this wave's going to bounce after it dies on the turret here. And the wave's going to slow push into him. And he can just wait for it to come in. It doesn't have to go up too far in the lane. Now, Brian is going back bot, so I don't really know what they're thinking now. Because Brian could have gone anywhere else in the map to look for his play. I think they realized uh, Paytime had backed and that Camel, you know, he's he's already been shoved out of the lane. So there's not really many places right now he can make a play. Perhaps in like a couple of minutes, just want to make sure, you know, your AD carry is safe. Jeff's already jumped in once. You got to be down there to... Yeah, I guess he wants to babysit Jeff so Jeff doesn't int again. But uh, I think going topside with Morgana here for the invade would have been really nice for him. Make sure that you secure this kill when you invade topside when Paytime walks in. But either way, we told the monster's going to be okay in the top side. He's not going to get the kill, but he also is not going to die, so it should be alright, and I think he was able to steal a couple of camps, so he's not too far behind the Volibear on farm. He always seemed to clear faster than the Volibear in general, but he also was going for some of these early ganks around the bot side, so it ended up delaying some of his really clear. 
Yeah, that, that that's where that's working. I mean, Swain did get the little stack, but it's just it's one stack. It's like five health. It's not the biggest thing in the world, but Utility Monster getting those camps. That's I think it's gonna be really beneficial for him. Uh, it's it's definitely setting Wild West back. Freelancer a bit. needs to reset here. If he doesn't bounce this wave and reset, then I think he's gonna get caught by Jolly Bear coming topside as soon as he walks up to the turret. But I'm yeah. not sure if Jet Wild West Wild's actually gonna commit to it. He realizes his topside camps are mostly down, except for his blue buff. So I think he's just did blue buff oh. and he's walking top now. Freelancer's in some pretty big trouble if he doesn't recognize that this is gonna happen. Yeah, I don't think he's recognized yet. He's still trying to duel, but now there's he's, a chance he's he can kill Paytime if he has ult up. But I don't think he's gonna be in range. No, I don't think so either. Freelance looking for something right yeah, here. Paytime picking him low. Oh, he goes down. Paytime picks him up. Freelance, another death in his pocket right there. And the score is even across the board. Still a goal, slight goal lead for UB, but, you know, giving it back. With silly little mistakes like that. And now Brian going forward. They're trying to get to Beshi. Trying to grab Beshi's it. To grab Beshi. Beshi goes down. The teleport coming in from Paytime. Pay time. Oh, they're looking for him right there. He's going to ult him away, Nice though. ult from Jeff God. They might actually be able to... Ooh. Oh, trying to get him, but he is going towards the turret. Maokai going to grab him. Half's going to pick him there. Paytime picks up the kill and trade one for one, but that is a teleport down from FEC committed for that fight. Yeah, but Paytime doesn't get punished for this because he already burned the teleport from Fre Freelancer back to lane, and the wave was already crashed on the turret, so he loses basically nothing topside. It's just generally really good to play from Fre or, uh, Paytime on the bot side of the map. And now you have Volibear and Lee Sin ahead topside. It becomes really difficult for Cho'Gath to play the game unless Utility Monsters wants to babysit him for the rest of the lane. So I think, honestly, at this point, you just need to concede the fact that top lane can't really play the game anymore and play really hard towards bot side because Freelancer's out of the game at this point. Yeah, he's just going to have to farm up and hope he can maybe come back later. Uh, I think Jeff God actually could have gone out that. I think his W was already, uh, was already up. He got it like at the reset from the bomb explosion, but he just held that for a very long time in that fight. Yeah, he got tagged by the Q from the Lee Sin when he could have probably dodged it with his rocket jump, but I wasn't sure on the cooldown either. So maybe he wasn't quite up to the cooldown to get it. So we'll have to see if we look on uh, later in the game for actually what the cooldown was. But I don't actually think he really could have done much in that situation as long as Lee Sin's willing to wait and hold it until he rocket jumps because. As Lee Sin, you just have to walk at him, and eventually he's going to have to run the rocket jump, try to predict it, because the Q at point blank isn't really dodgeable in reaction. Yeah, meanwhile, speaking of point blank, Brian just kind of probably grabbed Beshi right here. Beshi he's should die if he gets hooked, so he just needs he, to... He, he okay, did well, get hooked. Jeff grabs him, Beshi goes down again. Brian picks up this kill for himself. I think could have gone over the Jeff god, but... He was getting kind of low. I think he probably just wanted to make sure that there was no trade. That's fair. I, I do the same thing as a support. <laughs> But better to secure the kill than to not and die in the process. But. Yeah, and at this point in the game, I think it's also all right, regardless, as long as you make sure the kill happens, because you get to crash this wave, and it's going to get denied from him regardless, oh, so they make sure they actually deny a full wave of XP and CS. Camel's, Camel's, Camel's just dead. I don't know what monster. he's doing out here. He's trying to flash. He gets hit, rooted up, and Civilot grabs the kill for himself. Uh, nice pickup right there in the mid-bottom mid -bottom river. I'm not sure about this Swain pick. It's not looking super great. Uh... He is That's down a lot of CS to Corky, and he is. I, I don't know. It just doesn't seem super fantastic to me, but maybe it's just that he's not comfortable on the pick. We'll have to see. Maybe it'll look better in the mid-game once he's able to get these team fights with the ults, and I think that might be what they're playing towards, these big wombo combos with Volibear ults and all these beefy members frontlining, but I don't even think they're going to have a chance to get there if Botlane keeps snowballing like this, and they really need to shut down this Tristana. Yeah, and this is, feels like even if they get a kill, it's not really going on to anybody in the bot lane. Like It's, it's going on to pay time, it's going on to the Volibear. They're, they're not really getting Paytime anything. He could be in trouble here. He has to kick him away. He could have gotten killed from the alt range, I think. He was very close oh, to being in the range. On the bot side, Wild Wild West. Trying nice to flash from Utility Monster. Civ a lot coming in. They grab Wild Wild West. They managed to grab Brian, too, but down That's goes huge for Yubi. is dead. Three for one in favor of Yubi. Let's see how that broke yeah, out. Yeah, that was a great usage of the package from Civil Lock to cut them off here. We'll watch it again in the replay. But you can see they're all in the river, and they're kind of just walking up here. But Wild West Wild sitting on a ward right now. And they see him walk into the lane, and then as soon as they see this, Corky, you can see he's coming out from base with the package. They drop the Rift Herald, and they know they're going to defend this. So here comes the TP from Corky, and Utility Monster flashes out the Volley Barrel so he doesn't die. And the package, look at this package, and it's cuts Wild West Wild out, kills him, Beshi's just cut out too. I mean, they're just all dead from that burn damage. It's so insane. Yeah, that was great. It cuts the fight. It gets him onto the back, onto the Caitlyn. Makes it an easy target for there. Saves Utility Monster, because that snipe might have actually finished him off. But... Yeah, this this Cork Silwalk's doing a lot of work now. Now he's been able to get out of the lane, and this Swain still just he exists. And okay, Civilock just... is going for the scaling build here, actually, which makes it even scarier that he's getting accelerated this much. Normally, if you're playing Corky and you want to spike on one item, you're going for Divine Sunder, which means that your one item spikes can be really strong, but after that, your items aren't as good for you. Uh, you don't scale quite as well, but 
the build going uh, monoimmune and then you know essence reaver shield build kind of stuff uh, is just way way better scaling. And once you get to three items, it just becomes completely insane how much damage you do. So one of the big reasons people don't play Corky is because it takes so long to come online. He's so useless for so long because he's so accelerated in this game. He really never has to worry about that trough. And Brian's and gonna try to grab the time. Yeah, he's trying to silence him right there. Knocks him off. Be die. Oh, he flashed. Ooh. Wow. Just barely gets out with his life with the flash. If he got hooked, I, I agree. I think he was dead. I think Freelance just eats him. Yeah, Freelancer didn't have the ult up, but I think either way, if he doesn't have oh, a flash, yeah. he has to flash either way or he's going to die. I'm not 100% sure if it's worth flashing not to die there, though. I think it might have been better for him to hold the flash because flash on Lee Sin here is really valuable and it's very important for their team fighting. I guess they're just kind of banking on the fact that they're not going to fight this next Infernal, but if they have to fight it, Paytime's not going to have flash up. Yeah, and Infernal Soul, I, 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 if Yubi gets Infernal Soul, it's going to be absolute hell for FEC. That's two AD carries, both of them very fed right now, just burning through your team. It doesn't matter how tanky your, your Vola Bear is or how big your Lee Sin is, they're just going to die. They're going to grab this bot turrets. They will get first turret of the game, but Brian's uh -oh. going to try to grab Camel. Camel gets slowed down. He gets... He is in there. a lot of trouble he here. Is Jeff not jumping get, in. Uh, okay, jumping now in he's now. jumping in. That's a little... Yeah, a little late on that one. Just cost him his life. Gives the kill over to the Swain for the shutdown. He threw the bomb super late and then jumped in once he was under turret. I'm not sure. Maybe he didn't have cooldowns, but I don't think he had any reason to not have cooldowns. So he just wasn't sure if he was going to kill and then he decided to kill once he was under turret. Kind of just delayed reaction from Jeff got on the hook or people not on the same page in comms or something. But either way, I mean, now that the, honestly, the Tristana isn't the only win condition anymore. We kind of mentioned that Civil Lock is really coming online very, very quickly in this game. And He's already working towards, uh, he's got his Noom Quiver, so he's probably working towards the Shilbo on second item right now. And he's actually almost ahead of Tristana. He's going to be very soon, probably. Yeah, he's catching up very quickly. He's got so much CS right now. Utility uh, Monster getting caught on Paytime. Paytime actually might be the one who's caught here, though. Yeah, he's going to lock him down. Utility Monster's oh. going to get taken out. Paytime picks him up. And now Freelancer and Wild Wild West checking on Paytime. Aren't going to get the knock up, but here comes Jeff God trying to pick up one. Paytime goes That's down. Freelancer two. I don't think there's any way out for him. Bear going forward. Bear grabs it. Wild Wild West grabs Brian. But he's just going to go down. Jeff God's going to jump and pounce, get the kill. Freelancer on his own, trying to run away. The slow from the birds are not going to stop him. And Jeff God, actually, I think he's just going to get out. Uh, oh. Freelancer should be out. If he'd taken the Blast Plant in, he could have probably executed it, but he might even get out this way. I think this is going to be really close. He's going to get queued, I think. Yeah, Yeah, he's down right there. I feel, I agree. I was surprised. I thought he was going to take the Blast Plant, just get over the wall, and maybe even just back. I don't think they would have been able to catch him, but Civilok gets the turret on the Ooh, bottom that side. damage on the Maokai. That one oh. rocket from Corky did like a quarter of Maokai's HP. My goodness, this Corky is very, very scary, and it's only going to get worse. He's backing. I, I wonder, does he have enough gold for his... I don't think he has shield, but he probably has at least vamps up. Yeah, he's vamped up to right now. Yeah, he does have the vamp sep. He hasn't sold coal yet either, which is kind of scary. It means there's even more gold he's sitting on. So I imagine once he sells coal, he's going to immediately buy shield bow. That should be on his next reset whenever he finds it. And once you're on man immune shield bow as Corky here, this far into the game, once you're level 11, I mean, the electrocute's kind of whatever, but either way, you're going to scale regardless because of the items you build. Yeah. Well, on the other hand, though, FEC, you know, they got a, quite a few kills in that fight. They are starting to come back into this a little bit. The problem is they're all concentrated on the Lisa and the Volley Bear still. There's only a couple of kills that have gone over to the Caitlyn and the Swain, and oh. really the Caitlyn's the important one. She's just so far out of the game right now that she's really not yeah. relevant unless she's able to clean up the fight. Of the there. It's, oh, kicks Jeff God right in, but uh, packaging out, pay time going in. He's going to try to hit Jeff God. Jeff God does get ulted, tries to ult him out, half manages to grab him, picks up the kill. Tilly Monster chasing dead, him. Oh, Beshi is down, doesn't get to finish off Utility Monster, and now here comes the Lee Sin. Paytime is going to fall for it. Oh my wow. god, is not, what the hell? Manages to get out with just the skin of his teeth, and FEC stops the charge from Yubi. Yeah, really importantly there, Corky was actually bound up by the Maokai ultimate for almost the entire fight, wasn't able to put any damage on those front lines, and so... Ends up being really favorable for FEC, and Utility Monster is going to get caught on the backside too, because he was back there killing Beshi. Although on the front side, Freelancer might just kill someone. Oh, no, he's caught. Oh, they're just kind of walking in one at a time. Freelance is going to get picked up, too. He's going to go down, and it's a delayed ace for FEC. They have That's caught be the Infernal Dragon game. going over to FEC, though. It's I just coming so, up right too. now, and they're all going to be dead for it. Yeah, it's 10 seconds left until that is up. All five members of FEC on the map. Honestly, Paytime, fantastic play there by the Lee Sin. 
Yeah, I know pay time really <laughs> surviving there was really important for them, and now they're able to keep all everyone on the, or their entire team on the map for this Infernal Dragon. It's going to be a completely free take for them unless they're able to get a steal or something, but I'm going to try for it. And this is pretty nice for FEC. It delays some of the scaling pretty substantially. It gives them a win condition now, because they can play to the Infernal Soul win condition on the next two dragons. And it's one of the only ways really out of this bind they're in of being outscaled so heavily. Yeah, and you know, I, I think a part of it is also on the side of Yubi. They've just been kind of giving, they haven't been giving their opponents, I think, the respect that they should be giving them. Remember, they did lose the first game. This is not a like 3 0 stomp that Yubi's heading towards. They have, they were in quite a hole in the first game, so they've got to pay a little bit more respect. FEC can get wins that they want. Uh, that was just dead. I'm not yeah. sure why he was up that far, but he's going to die. Yeah. Brian with the long I don't think range, Brian though. should have gone for the hook there. I think Jeff got had it with the reset, but I, I agree. Yeah, oh, Brian ends up oh. taking the kill. Now, Wild Wild West has been caught out. Jeff got going forward to him, but well, Jeff got that's a too. questionable jump, but you might actually end up being working out for him. It might indeed, but he's going to lose his jungler for that. Jeff got got a run now. An ult burned from Wild West, but they're going to lose one. This could be really scary for FEC. They might all die here. Oh, Quick, it's a huge package. Yeah, that's a huge package. Paytime getting so Oh my low. god, the damage. They grab halfs on the side. Camel Basil getting low too. The quirky damage is so disgusting. They're all going to die. It is. Civilox going to pick up Wild West possibly. Oh, who's the just, rocket? And the bear manages to get out. That I thought FEC might have it there for a moment when they kicked Jeff got in, but like you said, the quirky damage is insane. Yeah, the moment you can see the quirkies arriving at the fight with package up, it's pretty much over for FEC. They just can't fight into quirky with package. It's not possible. He's too far ahead, and unless they're able to literally one shot him without him getting anything off, he just does so much damage. You can see right here, he's topside right now, and this fight goes on for a little while because Jeff God gets delayed with the ult out from Wild West Wild. But now there's no value roll to dive onto the Corky once in the fight. There's so many limited options to get onto him. Civilox is zooming in here, and this package is so good into this choke. They're all caught in this corridor, and they can't do anything. Yeah, they just get burned down. Brian grabbing Paytime on the side there, too, is very impactful. Paytime being such a... Honestly, the only, the only carry right now on the side of FEC. Him gone is just a cleanup for the fight. Now they're going to push this mid turret down. I think they're just going to take it. I don't think there's anything... Oh, actually, you know what? They might go for the Herald. I think they go for Herald instead. I don't think going for Herald makes much sense here because they're not going to get a ton off it at the moment. They are better off just pushing the tower with everyone. They might have been able to dive Beshi here. Herald's going to not do anything beyond getting maybe one other tower on the map, but plates are already down, so it's pretty low value in terms of gold, and you actually get more XP and gold from just farming the way of spot lane or top lane right now for Civil Lock and Freelancer, respectively. We'll see if they actually end up managing to get anything off it other than that, though, because there is always the possibility, if they have a game plan here of sort of where they want to put this and how they want to try to push their advantage, Maybe they can take this Herald to an inhib. And I think mid lane is really the only place to look for it right now, but maybe bot lane as well. Um, if they are able to push onto the inhib with the Rift Herald, then it is a good enough value for it that I think it's worth taking at this point. The question is, do they actually have sort of the, the ability and the gold lead to actually make that happen? Because they have to force down really hard in one of those lanes to be able to get that many towers. And the Sheen coming out from the Corky right now. Yeah, that's the Essence Reaver coming out, probably third item for him after the Shield Bow. And with Shield Bow finished on Corky, he's also going to be a lot harder to take down in these fights, even if they focus him, because he's going to have that huge shield, obviously. I mean, they're going to have to look for something like Wild West Wild ulting onto him or Paytime getting a kick. But even with that, with the Valkyrie, he's so safe. And unless he mispositions really horribly, then I think Civil Watch will be able to carry pretty much any fight they find for the next at least 10 minutes until Caitlyn's able to get to a couple more items. Yeah, I, th I think this. I think Civilox Corky is is the command right now. If Civilox is there, I think they win the fu every fight. If he's not, it gets a little bit rougher. But Half's now on his own. Brian looking to maybe grab him right here, but Paytime and Bishop oh, they're in collapse. The they need to get out. They are collapsed on indeed. But Half's he's all alone. Down goes one Wild West. Brian's gonna die too. Utility monster. Oh, it's Australia's. Oh, it's still really close actually. Ooh, close. But Brian manages to flash and get out of there. Dragon not up for two minutes, so not much they can get off of that, but ooh, Brian ooh. looking for a hook right there. It's five people trying to siege onto this power. Paytime on the side, Jeff God and Brian gotta be careful. If they get hit right there, that could be an easy kill for them. The kick is still so, up. So watch this bot lane right now, and they're gonna have to give this tower. I'm not really sure why he's bot. He doesn't need to push this wave. Yeah, it feels like he should be starting to group with his team and trying to stop this. Maybe it's just he feels a little bit more scared about the package pay time. He doesn't though. have Ooh. package, but he still should be able to put out enough damage with his R that he can clear this wave and not let the T2 go down. I'm oh, not sure what he's Brian doing right now. Brian grabs on to pay time. Pay time getting kicked back. He got through forward, though. He's actually Brian. in a pretty rough yeah, spot well, if he gets gone on, but thankfully yeah. they're actually able to push them off. Yeah, Wild West Wild goes down, so it's trade of support for oh, Paytime Jungler. I don't know if Paytime no to today. Him. Yeah, don't want to, don't want to take that in and die. Maybe he does though. Yeah, he's considering. Oh, oh. the bait. 
He's baiting us. And now we saw. Wow, you're getting all the cues. <laughs> Just <laughs> down at this point. This has been a, a honestly a big game from Paytime. He is showing up big on this Lee Sin. Yeah, I feel like every time he pulls out the Lee Sin, he just pops off. And I mean, this game has been no different. He's been really good. Oh, Civilized. That's scary. He could get. He is, yeah, Jeff. Oh my him. God, Paytime. Paytime's going to fall, though. Or not, no, sorry, not Paytime. It's going to go Wait. over to. But the Shield Bow. Yeah, the Shield Bow. Pretty scary right there. Manages to keep him I alive. I don't oh, know about this one. Lancer manages to grab one kill. The Caitlyn, though, if anyone knows, Beshi did go down back there. Civilock managing to pick that up. Honestly, how he got him right there. I thought he was. He just really caught him right with there. the R splash damage, I think. When they went for the kill on to pay, or onto uh, Civilock, Civilock just threw an R in there and it ended up blowing him up. Yeah, they did not see pay time there. Goes into Civilock. The kick back. Really good onto Jeff. Got yeah, so that R from Civilock just catches him. Yeah, just right there. And the shield and the shield bow. But then no one realized that I guess Freelance was just off there. I saw him on the side just farming blue buff. Just like, oh, I guess I could come here and get a nice lunch and just walk yeah. back. And the dragon's coming up right now in 24 seconds. That should be the Infernal going over now. So now it's going to be tied up 2-2 two to two on dragons. And both teams can start pressuring around this sole point. There's going to be a huge fight they'll probably have to decide in the game on this fifth dragon. But this one should be pretty free. Yeah, this one, not really much they can contest with. They've lost their big carry. They've lost they their... They could look for a steal with Wild West Wild. He does... Almost have the ult back up, and he has no flash, but he can just like walk in at this point because he's pretty tanky. I don't know if they're gonna be able to zone him, but they aren't gonna even go for the steal as far as it looks. Oh, maybe they are. They might. They might try. There's no blast walk. cone, so he's actually gonna have to commit the ult if he wants to, and the ult's not quite up. Yeah, it's not up yet. Getting close. That's Getting just gonna low. be from, Yeah. Yep. It doesn't get smited, but Civilock does grab. Whoa! It. They do grab onto halves, and he's half dead now. I think that's a dead. Baron right there. That that might just be Baron for Yubi. They're playing five before on the map, and I mean they really can't do much about this. I, I think it's so hard to walk into Corky and Tristana right now, especially with the Blitzcrank and Morgana looking for the bind and the hook respectively in the Baron pit area. They might just go for it right now, and I don't even know why they're recalling the Cho'Gath. I guess he has TP, so he can just TP to the lane if he really wants to, but they're taking a long time to start this. I'm not sure. It just seems like a really slow call from them if they're going to do it at all. I don't think they're going to do it. I think they're just going to get the, the scuttle down, back up, grab some items. The Essence Reaver is now out for Corky, so he is he's hitting those spikes. I, next up is it's right, Rapid Fire Cannon, correct? He could go Rapid Fire here. There's actually a few options. I don't hate the idea of him just going GA right now, but I think it's also fine to opt for the RFC if you really want to. There's plenty of choices though in Torque's itemization at this point in the game. It's basically it's going for situational items right now, and I mean, he's hit his big spike though. That's the important thing. The Man Immune, Shield Bow, and Essence Reaver, that trio which makes him so strong, and this is like probably the strongest point in the game for him, even though he's so far ahead. By the way, he's almost Flame Horizon Camel Basil in this game. I don't know what the Swain pick was supposed to do, but it doesn't seem like it's doing it. Yeah, it just kind of feels like it just cleans up if the fight is already won. It's just kind of existed at this point. Been pretty invisible, honestly. Like, it, it feels like it's, like, almost... I really haven't even, like, been paying attention. Like, where has this Swain been? I haven't seen him much in fights. I haven't seen really any big ults out of him. Any good, like, ease. It's just... He's he's there. He's existing. He's up there on the top farming, saying hello. And now... I mean, he's like farming. Hello, it's, like, behind so much farm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Like, that's like I mean it does doesn't it's it, it's not the successful farm but it, it it's farming it's just farming the, the air that those minions are they give off when they just pat when they die when you like just kill them I don't I don't know what yeah. minions are made of they're made of like we also have to mention something. freelancer is scaling super hard into this game Chogat is kind of known for just being this late game monstrosity of a tank because he gets all these feast stacks and just gets super super tanky but I mean you know he's pretty quiet in the early parts of the game getting pushed in pretty hard by the least and died a couple of times but now he's up to four four and two. He's got the Warmogs and the uh, Frostfire Gauntlet and a Bramble Vest, and you can see how huge he is in his character model as an indicator of how insane his HP value is starting to get. I think Paytime pretty much can't kill him anymore in the side lane. They're going to have to commit multiple members that even want to have a chance of taking him down. So we now yeah. have like an almost unkillable front line for this UB comp with all that damage oh, coming up. So lucky Camels got caught. Gets ulted by Utility Monster. He drops his ult, try to maybe get away. Wow, He's Swain's really good. good. Swain's such a good pick. I can't believe this champion has been going through so many drafts. Swain, oh, Halfs manages to grab onto Brian. The dunk coming through from the bear. This but is the TP from Freelance here. Though. He's looking there. He's on the back end. Civilock getting low. FEC's going to get wiped here. Down. He is going to go down now, though. They grab the Tristana. They managed to grab the Mount. Okay, they grabbed the Blitzcrank on the other side here. Jeff got going for. They're going to take out Paytime. Just gets annihilated. All right, right that's there. the Baron. Yeah, that is 100% the Baron. Tristana is alive. Morgana is alive. Cho'Gath can tank it. This is the freest Baron I've ever seen if they don't start it. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be an easy Baron over for Yubi. 
Such a good catch. Camel Base was just way too far forward, not respecting how fast F uh, the rest of UB can rotate over to catch him. Freelance with that teleport just to kind of cut off any exit. And it looked like it might turn around for a moment. They did manage to get Brian and they managed to grab Civilock, but once the Chogath is there, it's over. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. I just don't understand this one, man. I, I think it, like it, if from this game, what it looks like is if you get Camel Basil off of Vladimir and Silas and Viego, then like he just does this. And I, I don't know what this is, but it's not a good look. <laughs> yeah, it's, so you have to see if he can maybe come back into this. He has he's got a couple items. He's got the Zanyas. He's got the the. Uh, was it Rift, not Rift Maker? Rift Maker, yeah. yeah it, it is Rift Maker. The thing is, like major it. items in season eleven mean that if you have a second item, you have no damage. That's fair, so yeah. he's not going to really do anything until like four items at this point. He's going to have to go for Archangel's third probably, and then he'll probably be a little bit more relevant. But even then, I mean, he's so far behind. You can already see that the pickaxe oh, picked up. They've already caught out. It looks like that's yeah, Camel Basil again, but he's going to get away. Utility monster getting low. Ooh, the Caitlyn damage is actually pretty yeah. nice. Yeah, they got a pretty big one right there. Ooh, the yeah, here comes the package. package. Oh, such a big package. Manages to grab Luck a lot. might have actually just... gone too far. <laughs> yeah, it might have been a little bit too much, but they grabbed Camel. Brian's looking for another right there. Jeff's going to try to clean this up, but I don't see the damage. Pay time. This is it's not going to be enough. Jet Freelance, though. Oh, oh Freelancer. Right beast. there. I don't know. Is Freelancer just 1v3ing them? What is going on? Yeah, he think he's going to die for this one. He's, he's tanky, but he's not that tanky. And he's going to fall down. That's one kill. Brian managed to get out to prevent the ace. And I was... Uh, Jeff got a little too excited right there again. I think that one's on Civil Lock, man. He teleported into four people behind him and tried to package through. But, I mean, like, you can't do that as quirky. You have to really look for the, you know, package through the side maybe. But from behind and four people alone, obviously it's going to turn on you. And that is going to be the third Infernal picked up for FEC now. So this is really scary now for you. But there's actually a way to lose this game now if you lose Infernal Soul. Yeah, and I, I think I think though, uh, even with Civil Lock dying, they they could have walked out. They'd gotten a two for two trade, and they just start back. Yeah, Jeff away. jumping back in was a little bit ambitious. I don't <laughs> really know. He's been doing that all game though. It's sort of the Jeff God style is a uh, <laughs> forward is only forward. Him. Yeah, I mean he does have seven deaths most on his team, despite also having nine kills most on his team. Uh, you can kind of get a sense of the play style he's going for. He has the GA now, so maybe he'll have a little more safety in doing that kind of stuff. But even so, I don't know. I would like to see a little more restraint from his W key. Yeah, a little, little bit more restraint, playing a little bit further back. I mean, he has so much range. He doesn't need to jump, and he can just poke. I mean, not poke. We can just harass them from so far away with his well, base. that's sort of the thing for Civil Lock, is that he doesn't need to go for that huge package flank there. He can just TP in and then go for something where he's just, you know, shooting ours into the front line. He has so much damage, and Camel yeah. Basil's caught oh. again, by the way. He's dead. Yeah. Camel Basil's caught. Utility Monster takes him out. And now, again, it's a 4v4 over here. The Chogiath on the bottom side. Teleport isn't quite up, so he cannot be with his team. I think it's okay. Payton doesn't have teleport either, so this is actually an unanswered split from the Chogath. And as long as Yubi recognize this and play safe on topside just to push the waves in, then Chogath will bring the wave all the way into the bot inhibitor turret, and then they can pressure both lanes. Yeah, and Utility Monster hiding right there, looking to maybe grab a pick if anybody walks too far forward. They're looking for a Maokai ult on the side here, maybe, but I think that they can't fight. Yeah, Wild Wild West does. Wild West Wild does manage to get. Chogath's getting the wave in there though, and this is going to be probably two turret. Bashi took a lot of damage from that explosion. Yeah, that's a lot. And Freelance and Paytime trying to do did really good when there was AP because, you know, he's mostly armor. But when it's just Paytime trying to match him, but it's not enough. You just don't do anything to this Cho'Gath at this point in the game. Yeah, it worked when they had, you know, he had Maokai, who's built a lot of AP. And um, you've got, like, the AP coming off of the Volley Bear. But it's just AD. Um, like, this, you can't kill this guy. He's Paytime? Just, Paytime is just trying to flee. He's, he's going back uh, out. Paytime? Paytime is just, he has to ult to get out of there. That's the call to go mid lane. Now they can't get Jeff God and Civil Lock kicked in if they go too far forward. And it's going to be this last outer yeah, turret. Yeah, it's just a free turret. Fall. Yep, drops right down onto the ground, burning away. And now they're sieging up onto the base. Oh, they're going to rotate to join Freelancer on the bot side here, I think. But they might just yeah. be taking bot side jungle and resetting. It's not entirely clear. They can do either. I think matching the push on Freelancer side is fine. But the reset probably signal a lot of gold from those turrets they've taken down. I imagine Corky's pretty close to finishing his fourth item now. And really the big spike they're waiting for on, or waiting on now is actually just going for the uh, Tr Tristana being on six items. Because she's just on five right now. She's sitting on a long sword in her last slot, so she can't buy for quite a while because the completion cost is going to be so high. I imagine she's probably going for something on last item, like an LDR uh, or a Mortal Reminder, but I think the Mortal Reminder is pretty good here. There is only one Grievous item built on the team for Yubi, and it is the Thormail on the Cho'Gath, but there is also Lee Sin, Volibear, and Swain in the game, and a Maokai, so 
I think having more Grievous be pretty nice for them. Makes these team fights a lot easier, even if they're not hitting the Cho'Gath. Yeah, and I, I just want to point out, Civilock has now officially Flame Horizon Camel Basil. Uh, he's, yeah. He's, he's surpassed at this point. He's up 120 almost CS. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's getting, you know, maybe he'll double Flame Horizon by the end of this game. Who knows? <laughs> If it goes on long enough and with how crazy this game is and how back and forth it just might dragging up in a minute and a half bearing up in 45. They could look for a fight here, but I think Yubi should play a little safe Ooh. right here. Don't don't go. I don't like the cosmic drive by from Morgana here. I think she should have just gone straight from Merlin Omicron because she's putting so much of that AOE damage down from the pool. that She can put Grievous on everyone because Shogat's not going to get on every single member of this team. And it would have made it easier for Jeff God to itemize on a sixth item, having to go for or being able to go for more damage to the LDR rather than having to go for something like Grievous. He is going to go for the last whisper, still going into the LDR. So that just means they're really limited on these anti healing options. And it makes the fights a lot harder if they're able to blow steel up because the, these healings are just like so substantial from Volibear with Spirit Visage, Swain, I mean, Lee Sin with Gore Drinker, and even Maokai, obviously, is being Maokai. It's just so much healing. And I don't know. It just makes the game so much easier to play if you just buy Merlin Omicron here. But the Cosmic Drive is just going to give you more AP, which isn't really useful. It's Morgana at this point in the game. The way you conduct your way itself in team fights is essentially the same regardless of your AP value right now. Yeah. And now the ba they're setting up for Dragon uh, on the UB side. It's up in 40 seconds. Jeff got taking a lot there. Those Maokai saplings are hurting this game. Looking around. They don't have much vision. The saplings are the only vision. Freelancer just tanking it. He's got the worm. scary for Yubi, actually. I think that... Oh, oh, he's the hook. Then, okay, well, he's the hook. going down. Jeff God grabs the kill. Here comes the teleport from Corky. I think he has the package. I don't he think they need to look to fight more here. This should just yeah. be Dragon going over for free. They don't need to commit to trying to fight for more. They can't walk in 5v4 in the Dragon Pit, and they can oh, zone another wild out. But man, what? Pay time, to pay, pay time just gets locked in place. He's going down. He's getting so low. They're still chasing him. There he goes the package. He is very dead. Pay time is gone. Oh, my God. He no, managed to still got him. He's completely dead. Yeah, he's going forward, looking for looking for a pick right here. Jeff God looking to maybe pick it up, but it's going to go over to Civilock. That's the call for the dragon. Yeah. Another infernal going over. So now we're three to three on dragon. Still no infernal soul picked up. Thankfully, Yubi denied the infernal soul, which actually pretty, like it saves the game for them. If, if they pick up the infernal soul for FEC here, then the game gets really really scary. But now that they're actually both on soul point, I think it's a pretty easy close for Yubi. If they just buy some grievous wounds, then it would be the easiest game of their lives. But at the very least, they're going to get that, and they're going to be able to push in the mid lane, because Paytime is still oh. dead for a little while. Camel getting... Ooh, manages to go. He has to flash for it. Brian taking a little bit right there. Ooh, that yeah, binding was really close. Yeah, if that had hit Beshi, I think Beshi just immediately dies. But now Freelancer is here, and now I don't think everyone wants to be taking face Southside it. Jungle and looking to the Baron bait here, but I don't think baiting Baron does a ton right now, unless they're able to front line with the Trogeth really easily into it, and... I guess he's tanky enough, but... Oh, Brian. Wild West Wild might get hooked. There's a chance. Wild West Wild is caught. He's silenced. He's just getting nuked by Freelancer. Freelancer, Freelancer doesn't damage, by the way. He's, like, completely fine. Yeah. Oh, Jeff God, though, gets to jump out. Sherlock's fine, though. That's just free firing on the back line. Yeah, Halfs goes down. They managed to grab one right there. Camel Basil goes golden. He managed to get Whoa. him out. Jeff God goes forward, manages to grab Beshi. Whoa. Jeff God! Whoa. Wait, it's the Jeff God pop -up. It is. Civilock, though, goes on the backside. Paytime manages to pick up the kill, managing to save that entire fight. Paytime is doing work, trying to do the most work he can do this game to save his team, to keep their playoff hopes alive. But now, Freelancer... He's in trouble. Jeff got still a GA, and he probably has the rocket jump back up, so I think it's, Paytime should die here no matter what. Yeah. Paytime just goes down. Freelancer just noms him. This is a beefy trick. What's his Cho'Gath? I think they so should far? just Baron here. They can two-man Baron with Cho'Gath and Tristana right now, and I don't think they'll have anyone to respond. They obviously don't have a jungler, but I don't think Volleyball can even respond to them if he tries to walk in so he's just gonna die and they don't have red sides so they can't hop over the wall to always have vision if he tries to walk in yeah they just backed off i don't think they have the time at this point freelancer i guess could start it everyone's starting to no, they shouldn't do it now they had to just turn out immediately after killing pay time yeah. but now it's too yeah. late i have still no clear vision on top side and then i think they might still look to bait baron again honestly just because it's such an easy setup for them but at this point i just want them to wait for the infernal soul fight because i think that's basically the easiest point in the game for them to force the fight oh. to come into them Bear versus alien. What? Who wins? What is Turns Wild West it's doing? just gonna be the Yordle that wins. Halfs going to have to run away right there. Manages to get out with his life, but Wild West Wild. I don't know. That's, that's, a, that's a Baron start. There's no jungler on the side of FEC. They can't walk in, and I, oh, I think got got free Baron going over. Half Scott grab. He's gonna get out. No one's there to follow up for Brian. But yeah, I don't even know why you would challenge the Cho'Gath. Uh, even if it's a one v one, like central hook here, it's kind of scary. I think oh, Brian's gonna die, but he might catch hook half. Oh, he gets hooked again. Brian's gonna live. Half's gonna go down. Jeff got Whoa, a lot of damage. Goes forward, going for Campbell. Okay, I don't know about that one, but I think he's yeah. fine. 
Yeah, it's a little bit too far forward. The Caitlyn trap's trying to save them a bit. Brian, though, gets Brian, the, oh, the crazy flash hook. Oh, utility monster doesn't grab a civil lock, does pay time, manages to grab. Yeah, but that's actually gone, and that's what, like their yeah. main damage threat at this point in the game. Pay time can do what he wants, but I don't think he's going to be able to stop them. They have Baron. Oh, they can just push it down monster and end. Pay to stop. Die too. Yeah, pay time almost dying right there. Misses the Q. It's Dude, just can't Q. He's going to die. I mean, okay, well, yeah, Swain's a good champion. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's going to end the game, I guess. Like, they can't stop them. They're so low. They can zone them from Nexus here, and they shouldn't be able to clock back, but I guess they're yeah. going to wait. To... What is... Just end the game! I, I don't know why they haven't ended it yet. They, I agree. They could have ended it right there. Maybe they're just that scared to pass. they just walk behind Nexus turrets there, they can't walk back to their fountain to heal, and they're all on, like, 1 HP. I'm pretty sure they could have ended right there super easily, but instead they're going to opt to just reset with the Baron, take all the jungle camps again, and hope they can end again. I mean, they should be able to, but now you're actually giving the chance for FEC to win the game, or at least come back into the game. If they can coin flip this Infernal Soul, then, I mean, the game actually becomes winnable for them. So I, I think yeah. you should have taken the opportunity to close while you had the chance before Infernal Soul even came up. Yeah, and I, 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 it wouldn't be a UB game, though, if you didn't play it on the edge, and maybe they just want to play it that close, going for this soul. I mean, I, yeah, I think at this point, like, what I'm, I am half expecting them to just steal Infernal Soul, and then FEC is going to mount some crazy comeback, and then UB is going to somehow still win their back door. But we'll have to see. That's kind of what I expect from UB games at this point. <laughs> oh, my God. If that happened, that'd be, that would be such an exciting moment. I see civil lock has grabbed the package we saw it come up earlier another hand but she might get hooked and then the game's just over but we'll have to yeah. see what brian's able to look for he doesn't have the flash up so it's going to be much more difficult for him to look for those hooks really far up and he's gonna have to play around the vision setup they have around this dragon they do have a really strong vision setup in the enemy bot side jungle i don't know what the double pink wards are about from fec um it just like makes it take longer to clear them but i don't think it does a whole lot yeah, I, I like, guess it actually prevents them from clearing, but okay, well, no, he clears both. So, yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't know. Just giving more gold over, I guess. He can take all the hits, and ooh, that almost hooked. Civil lock. He's just waiting and basically for a teleport right uh, there. The he manages to grab one. He jumps kind of cop. He should be fine. I think yeah, well, it's over now. Yeah, well, that's wild. Goes down. Double that is a big jump. shield in the chug. Yeah. That is a beautiful package. That is an ace for Yubi. Ladies and gentlemen, Yubi have done it. They have aced fec they have put their stomp on this series and i think they're just going to go in the game unless they really decide to go back but i really don't think they should at this point this show gap is so big oh my god with the gargoyle shield in that fight too he took like literally zero damage just yeah, tanking just... nexus turrets totally fine for like 25 seconds how many stacks 12 stacks on the show gap 5800 health absolutely insane yubi takes it three to one and moves on to the losers final against int Oh, what a game. I Look, I think it was pretty clearly you'd be favored the entire game. FEC was really never in the driver's seat in this game, but it still really made us uh, really work for it, I think. You know, you'd be, especially Jeff God, really just trying to draw out every ounce of drama from this game. <laughs> trying his damn hardest to. And, you know, I, I, I have to give credit on the side of FEC, though. I think Paytime, especially, Paytime is, the, is what kept them in this game. I, yeah, think... I also want to give credit to Beshi. I think even being set behind from lane so much, he was actually pretty impactful in some of the mid-game team fights as this Caitlyn put out quite a bit of damage, but unfortunately it just wasn't enough after the early start they got on Tristan and Corky. Yeah, that support Maokai did pretty good too. Yeah, overall, good game, but you know, Yubi manages to take the win. Jeff got this huge damage, so is Civil Lock and Look, I never want to see Swain mid again, ever. <laughs> Please, just <laughs> don't. If anyone picks Swain mid in the next two series, I'm just going to be so unbelievably disappointed. Just don't. Just don't. Yeah, I, I, I felt like it wasn't as impactful as as you as they were hoping it would be, but it was a good try nonetheless. And now, looking forward to next week, INT versus UB. Ooh, that's gonna be exciting. I, I mean, honestly, with UB look as good as they did today and continue to draft semi competently like they have in most of the games in this series, then I'm a little scared for INT. I think that UB can definitely kind of bring it back, even though INT was the team that gave them one of their only losses in the regular season. I think their only loss. Um, you know, I, I, I do have some faith in them now seeing this series. They only troll draft a couple of times and some of the picks they pulled out look pretty good. I like the Cho'Gath for Freelancer. I like Utility Monster, but still being on the Morgana, still being on these picks he's really comfortable on. And Brian is just as consistent as he's ever been. So I'm really excited for that match. I think both teams are really strong right now. And I mean, I favor Yubi, but I think it should be a fun one. And that does it for us. Uh, but don't go anywhere. We've got an interview with the winning team just after this break. So don't go anywhere.
Hello, everyone. Chris Edgeworth here for today's interviews. I am joined by Jeff Godgamer and Brian Sang of Universal Basic Income. Congratulations on the big win, 3-1. Uh, how are you folks feeling after that? Uh, we're feeling pretty pumped. Honestly, we knew that FEC was going to be a really difficult opponent uh, from the very first moment we faced them. When we faced them in qualifiers, and you know they almost knocked us out of FOF, so we almost didn't make it. Uh, we knew that they were going to be a really tough team to beat. So uh, being able to make it a 3-1 and just kind of, uh, even after our first loss, just tough it out and uh, make our way to all the way to the finish line definitely was uh, definitely was really uh, made us feel really good about ourselves. Um, all right, well, let, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about um, overall just prepping for this series, especially what your thoughts were on the, the different drafts that were thrown at you and what you guys were able to pull out. Um, what was this prep ser uh, like for this series? coming in against Falcon, and what did you think about uh, what you guys are able to pull out in this? Yeah, uh, Falcon is pretty hard to draft against because they, they do roll swap three of their players around, and it, it becomes hard to draft against them because they don't have to... Each player has a different pool. But we think we... Most drafts in, in this series look pretty similar. I think there was not a whole lot of unique uh, champions played after the, the first couple of games. So we still think um, that we got the better of them in draft. We forced uh, we forced Haps top lane a couple of games, which is really good for us. As as you saw, Freelancer got a, a couple solo kills in a, a early game in this series, and that really uh, boosted our our play style through the rest of the series. Yeah, it did. Uh, I think the last game for me was really emblematic of how you guys were able to pull out or you know tense out a lot of the, the weaknesses that you were seeing in falcon especially because in that last game it was so patently obvious it was the classic uh jeff god and brian experience bottom lane while uh, on the other side of the map uh they were heavily invested on getting uh pay time ahead on that lease and he got pretty scary there for a while but i mean you know the the chogoth was like at like disgusting at the end of the game like absolutely just disgusting like yeah there's no words for it when you see a 5k uh like 6k rather 5.8 and he doesn't even have the gargoyles on he's already used it you're just like what is this <laughs> um so let's let's talk a little bit about um uh, your bottom lane experience um first of all i just want to uh, touch on this is something i think that uh, we've spoken about before but ezreal um the first two games uh it was Ezreal uh, fun time hour out there uh, trading it the pick back and forth. Um, Jeff, what are your what are your thoughts on uh, the Ezreal priority in the ADC pool that was uh, traded in this? Yeah, Ezreal's uh, a little busted. <laughs> to to put it lightly, he's he's like first pickable in almost every situation. Um, it's really hard to play against it. Is he'll just no matter what he if you think he has a strong or if you think he's weak early game, he'll beat you up. If you think he's weak late game he'll still beat you up so he's he's very slippery he can go he can be very tanky and still do a ton of damage so he's uh he's really strong that's why when uh, we were red side we just chose not to play against it even though we think we can still beat it uh what were, what are you what about you uh brian you did you did have to uh lane up against uh, against us in the first game and then you were able to benefit from having the uh, afk uh uh just let jeff do his thing on ezreal in the second game uh what are your thoughts on trying to match up against this Ezreal, especially with how much damage and this he was able to dump out on you in the first game? Yeah, uh, for sure. Um, I think one of the big things that is problematic about Ezreal is that I think it's very difficult for FEC because of the way FEC plays. It's difficult for them to play around Ezreal. And uh, conversely, we play a very similar style to FEC. So it's very difficult for us to also play around Ezreal. So having that as kind of an AD carry where it's really hard to dive, but able to dish out damage at a range is very valuable for both teams. Um, so just having to lane against it, um, it's not a particularly good or bad lane. Uh, you can definitely bully on Ezreal, but I think in the game they did play Ezreal. Uh, I, I did get bullied a little bit, but that's mainly because of my positioning and not because of uh, Ezreal, the champion itself. Um, what I would take from that is that I think Ezreal just gives a large measure of safety to AD carry picks, and I think it's just very well positioned in the meta. Uh, I could have definitely played better the first game and played around the Ezreal a little bit more, but it is very difficult to punch an Ezreal in lane, which is what ended up happening. I was not able to really impact the lane, and then that ended up snowballing in the uh, wrong direction. 
Now, uh, I do want to touch a little bit on, on uh, game two. Uh, I won't spend too much time on it because it was an absolute uh, smacketing. You just levied on these guys. Um, you did, uh, Brian, pull out the very interesting Zyra pick. Uh, what, what were your feelings on uh, pulling this out and uh, in this game, especially having the uh, Cog-Lulu matchup that you guys absolutely shredded? Right, so what Zyra does is Zyra is very good at dishing out a large amount of damage, so it, it helps us diversify our damage threats, because a lot of the time you'll notice that we pick like, you know, a damage threat in Clover or a Civil Lock and a damage threat in Jeff, and so then it sometimes can create very lopsided fights if we lose one of them early. Uh, Zyra is one of the champions I've played for a long time, and I have a lot of experience on it. And I think Zyra is a kind of unique champion, and she's able to dish out a large amount of damage in mid and close range. So when I saw these kind of, uh, this kind of mid-range Kog'Maw and this Viego, who really wants to dive in, and um, their other melee champions that they picked in their other lanes, I thought it would be very easy for me to kind of output damage and make it very difficult for their melee champions to operate when playing against Zyra. So really, when we came into this game, we were really looking for something that would allow me to pressure, well, both use my skills in pressuring the lane and also allow me to kind of just neutralize all their melee threats. Yeah, I think uh, you can see just looking at like the, the damage charts in game two, how hard of a time like Diego had to get in. He was only able to do 1400 damage in a 25 yeah. minute game, which isn't exactly something you want from your mid laner. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth because uh, in game one, uh, the Viego was uh, pretty pretty spooky. Um, and then game two, uh, a little bit of a, a wet fart there, I'm not going to lie. So uh, it was a tale of two uh, Viegos in this series, which is uh, interesting because he's been very heavily prioritized, um, not only in this league, but also um, in uh, professional leagues. Um, I would like to pivot, uh, Jeff, to a little bit of your pick. Uh, for game three, you do pull out the Sivir. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, Sivir in this meta? Uh, you guys were able to pilot it to great success. Obviously, you guys pull out the winning game three. Um, you guys uh, did excellent, both of you in the bottom lanes, uh, excellent KDAs. Um, but uh, yeah, Jeff, talk to me a little bit about the Sivir pick and uh, piloting it in game, game three. Yeah, so when Ezreal's off the table, they early pick the Tristana, which signals to us that um, Sivir is a really good pick. As, as I don't really enjoy playing Sivir because I think it's relatively boring compared to other uh, AD carries. But, you know, you, you just do a, a ton of damage, you get a ton of kills and assists, so it's really good for the team, which I, you know, my, my captain loves to hear because it makes me very upset. Uh, but yeah, Sivir is really good, especially paired with Leona, making it really easy to land both parts of the Boomerang Blade. But overall, I think uh, we were able to get the best of uh, all bot lanes that FEC threw at us, all like three different combinations of bot lanes that they have. Now, I do want to move on and talk a little bit more about uh, your teammates, but I do want to touch on uh, the last game here that we just got out of, actually. Uh, you you guys uh, kept it a little interesting, let's say, uh, throughout the, the middle of the game there. Um, as I was saying earlier, you know, Paytime was able to come online a little bit there through the mid game. And then you guys uh, gave up a couple of uh, favorable uh, I, capital INT interesting uh, plays there. So, uh, Jeff, what was it like uh, piloting the Malphite ultimate into them uh, towards the end of the game? Yeah, there? you know, we, we, were, we were giving a little shout out to our opponents next week by uh, running it down a little bit. Um, definitely, my team is very upset when I play Tristana because it gives me a, a uh, suicide button. As, uh, as I like to call it, you know, sometimes I, I just think that I can kill them all and uh, I jump in and I die. So, uh, fortunately, when, when I don't die, though, it's really good because we kill them all. So, uh, I think Tristana is good. I just have to uh, not repeatedly jump in to four people on my own. <laughs> Brian, what are your, what's, what's your thoughts on this when you see your, your ADC do this? Uh, how hard did you smash the report button after the game? Uh, so definitely when after we got you know two or three kills in bottom lane i was uh, of the mind that you know the game should be over we have a pretty overwhelming advantage and i should be able to snowball that over the rest of the map uh but then we took some uh unfortunate trades where jeff did go a little over aggressive and it's a, uh, a little bit hard for me to follow up on him i do know how much he does love making those um montage plays but i think our communication was just a little bit off because i wasn't quite able to properly support him in those plays so definitely we'll try to tone it back a little bit for the future so that we can uh, be on the same page and still be able to generate those plays while uh, keeping him out of danger for the rest of the game. All right, well, let's let's shift gears. Let's talk a little bit about the rest of your team. Uh, Jeff, can you give me some thoughts on uh, your top laner, 
your mid laner and your jungler here, uh, the other folks that are not a part of this uh, interview right now. What are your thoughts on your teammates, and especially now that you guys are headed into our losers bracket final next week against INT? Yeah, our, our team played really well today. Um, I was mildly worried about our solo lanes coming in because uh, I know against BBZ they had a little bit of a rough time, but they've been practicing a lot to make sure that that didn't happen again. And it really showed today. Um, Freelancer was able to hold it down top lane most games. Uh, Utility Monster plays super well as always. He's making, besides the last game where he ran it down a little bit. But uh, Civil Lock played really well. Uh, he, he sent Camel Basil back to school, uh, even though he just graduated. So, uh, you know, he's mastered mid lane. Other teams think they stand a chance just because they banned Galio, but little do they know, Civilok has a secret helicopter Yordle and won't hesitate to unload his package on anyone who tries to stop him. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that uh, the rest of our team definitely performed very well this series. Uh, we were one of the big things we were worrying about is, you know, Camel Basil is a very high ranked solo queue player. Uh, so, you know, he's a he, he was in Masters uh, earlier this week, I believe. and. You know, when you look at his win rates and the kind of champions he plays, he can be kind of a very distorting force in the game where he has a very large impact on the rest of the map where he takes his advantage in lane and really spreads it around the map. So having uh, Civil Lock in here perform so well this series was really just a, really a godsend for us because uh, he really shut down kind of uh, after, you know, game one, um, but games two through four, he really shut down uh, Camel Basil's uh, play and uh, prevented him from really doing, I think, what the Cam Camel Basil does best, which is really just kind of roam around the map and generate pressure for the rest of his team. So I was really proud for him. When he uh, solo killed uh, Camel Basil as Galio, I promised to buy him dinner. So, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of him. I think he did really well as a as a player. What's for dinner? <laughs> I, I, we don't know yet. We, we'll have to figure <laughs> it out. Fair enough. Uh, well, uh, definitely a huge win for Universal Basic inco Income. So well done uh, to you both. Jeff God and Brian, thank you so much for joining us for this interview. Before we step away for the evening, uh, any final thoughts to leave with us? Yeah, it, it's really nice that we, we got sent to loser's bracket, so that now we get to el eliminate every relevant team in uh, the bracket. Yeah, uh, I think it's a little bit unfortunate that we have to play so many games because a lot of our team, uh, apart from Jeff, is uh, quite old. So, you know, it's difficult for us to play very long series, but, you know, we're managing to uh, make do as, as and take it uh, one game at a time. Uh, I, but I think that the, our experience and our age does give us an advantage because I think compared to other teams, we uh, we uh, do have a little bit more of a kind of stronger mental. So even when we end up losing games, even when we you know are down gold, we're able to kind of stabilize and talk it out, figure out where the problem is, and really kind of recover for the rest of the series. So uh, that's uh, as uh, my team has been joking, it's just the prefrontal cortex diff, just because we're all old. You know, we're all over like twenty. Most of us are over twenty five. So our fully developed brains just let us be more mentally stable than the other teams. So hopefully uh, in the future against the other teams, we're looking to, you know, just kind of stabilize uh, and make sure that we're just playing our best every game so that we can give on a, a good showing. I did have one more thing I forgot to ask you folks. Uh, either one of you willing to lay a marker down on uh, what the series uh, final will be for INT? Is it a 3-0, 3-1, 2 Any of you got a marker to lay? I would probably say 3-1. Uh, I think Int Int has, uh, is the only team to beat us in the regular season. Um, we think they're probably, after beating FEC, now we think that they're our toughest opponent going into the end of the season. So it, it just gets easier from here, I think. Yeah, um, well, what I'm hoping for is definitely a 3-1 or a 3-0, uh, just because uh, I think it would be very difficult if we had to play five games or more for for us senior members of Team UB, so we're hoping, we're definitely crossing our fingers for a 3-1 or a 3-0. All right, well, we'll have to see whether that works out for you both. Uh, thanks so much uh, for this interview, Jeff God, Brian. Um, good luck next week against INT. And uh, folks, we will be back with our Mythic matchups this Friday, so please join us then. Um, and folks, we'll, otherwise, we'll see you next week for Heroic. So thanks again uh, for joining me for uh, this extended uh, lounge slash interview, I guess. Uh, Brian and Jeff are both very well spoken, so appreciate it. Um, and folks, I'll see you all on uh, Friday. So be well and have a good night. Thank you.